Hello everyone, I'm Brior and welcome back to Good Game Empire. A while back, and I do mean a while back, I made a video about cheats, hacks, and exploits. It was one of my first videos to garner more than a few thousand views, and I actually credit a lot of this channel's success to it. In retrospect, I wish I had made that video a little bit later on, when I had a better microphone and a better understanding of how to make videos. However, it's out there, and the best that I can do is move on. But a lot has changed in a three-year period, so perhaps it's time to tackle that subject again. So once again, today I ask, is it possible to cheat in Good Game Empire? And the answer, of course, depends on how you define cheating. If you define cheating as giving yourself extra resources or leveling up automatically or anything like that, the answer is pretty much no. The game runs off of servers indirectly owned by Good Game Studios, and you can't really write anything to those servers that Good Game Studios doesn't want you to be doing. So anything you see in a YouTube video, for example, that gives you extra rubies is really just changing the number on your screen, not the number in the database. And when you refresh your page, that number will go back to normal. In other words, it's not permanent. It doesn't actually work. Most often, these suspicious YouTube videos will point you to an executable to download. That executable will either take your login information, like your username and your password, or it will request that you fill out some surveys. And when you fill out those surveys, somebody is making money. While it may not be possible to just give yourself extra rubies, it's widely known that Good Game Empire is very repetitive. What if you could get your computer to play the game for you? doing such actions as recruiting troops, producing tools, and even sending attacks. Well, this is the central idea behind a form of cheating called botting. It's when players use scripts and they leave the game window open and their computer plays the game on their behalf. Perhaps you've heard of botting not because somebody you know is doing it, but instead because Good Game Studios has really made an effort to remove it from the game. It used to be that you had to recruit your troops five units at a time, and there was also an incentive to recruit just one troop at a time, because if your alliance was active and could answer help requests very quickly, that was a way to double the number of troops that you could recruit in any given amount of time. So you had to be very active going through the barracks window and adding troops to the queue. But Good Game Studios changed that so you can now recruit I think up to 400 units in one go, and if you have the build items for the barracks, you can even go beyond that. So bots aren't very useful for troop recruitment or tool production anymore. Also within the past few years, Good Game Studios greatly increased the ability of the game itself to detect when you are using bots. If you are suspected of using bots, the game will ban you, at first for just a few hours, but repeat offenders can earn themselves a permanent ban. Exactly how the game determines whether or not you are using bots is undetermined, but most likely it's looking for very timely actions. So, if the player opens up the recruitment window every five minutes exactly, that is more likely to be a computer than a human being. Each time new features are added to the game, the authors of these bots have to go back and fix their bots so that they can work with the live version of the game. I was actually offered a copy of Melchizedek, which is one of the more popular scripts by somebody very close to Good Game Studios. It's possible that they were just trying to bait me to see if I would accept the offer, but I never found out because I turned it down. If you perform a Google search for Mel you're not going to get any relevant results. To get a copy of the script, you would need to know somebody in the game who's using it and who trusts you enough to share it. If you were actively looking for somebody to share the bot with you, you would probably get reported to Good Game Studios and banned. Even if you managed to get a copy of the bot, you could very well be automatically detected using it and once again, banned. And finally, Good Game Studios has really ramped up their Ruby offers recently, and it's been annoying, but there's a reason why. Each time these Ruby offers pop up and obscure the screen, the player has to go up to the top corner and click on the red X. This is not something that bots are good at doing. It messes them up. It used to be that these promotional offers appeared at the top of every hour, but then the authors of the bots could simply write it into the program to close a pop-up at the top of the hour. So Good Game Studios has made the timing of these offers a lot harder to predict, and there's more of them. So once again, that kind of throws a wrench in your plans of botting. As somebody who strives to play as fairly as possible, I say good. 
But let's talk about some of the other things that players have done over the years to get the better of Good Game Studios. Specifically, let's talk about the payment shop. It used to be that you could extend the duration of a primetime offer. All you'd have to do would be click on the offer in the game, and that would open up the payment shop in another tab. In that tab, as long as you left it open, even if the offer expired, so long as you bought rubies, you would still get the relevant bonuses. Players would purposefully let the primetime offers expire so that they could combine it with the deal that would follow the primetime offer. As you can imagine, there were some really great deals to be had, but unfortunately this trick won't work anymore. One thing that players have been doing more recently is using a VPN to buy rubies as if they were from another country. I've never done this myself, and I don't know if this trick is still working. If it is, I imagine the developer will be pretty quick to address it once they hear about it. But anyways, here's how it works. If you were an Egyptian, for example, you could buy rubies for much cheaper. I don't know exactly why that is. Perhaps it's because Egyptians could have less disposable income. Again, I don't know, but for whatever reason, rubies are cheaper when you buy with that currency from that country. So, using a VPN, you can make it look as if you were from that country, and you can purchase rubies at that country's price. So, players were getting a really great deal. Keep in mind that if you mess around with the payment shop in any way, you could be banned permanently. If you've ever seen a player on the world map who has protection mode activated for, like, 20 years, that player has been permabanned. When you purchase rubies in Good Game Empire, they are credited to your account pretty much instantly, and many players have tried to abuse this by charging back their credit card, i.e. denying Good Game Studios from actually taking the money from them, even though they've already got the rubies. And this doesn't really work, Good Game Studios obviously knows about this, and once again they will ban you until you pay them the amount that you owe them. Another form of cheating is purchasing an account from somebody else. I call this cheating because it is technically against the rules of the game, but it's a way to get ahead without putting in all that work. There are only two problems with this. First, it's not very secure. First, you have to pay a stranger on the internet, and you also have to trust that stranger never to log back into the account or reset the account's password using the email that the original owner signed up with. The other reason that I don't think this is a good idea is because just buying a high-level account won't get you the knowledge you need to run that account properly. The tutorial of the game should teach you a few things, but ultimately you will need to level up your own account to really get the hang of things, or I suppose just watch a lot of my videos. Jokes aside, this is really not something that I recommend, because I've heard a lot of horror stories about the original account owner coming back and reclaiming the account without offering a refund. Finally, one other thing to consider is that the account may have a very bad reputation. Perhaps the previous owner was a real jerk and made a lot of enemies in the game. Those enemies might be in powerful places and might be able to deny the account from getting into high-level alliances and uh, all of that. So all of the forms of cheating that we've talked about earlier in this video are either ineffectual or, in my opinion at least, way too risky. But what if we change the definition of cheating simply to taking advantage of some of the more poorly designed elements in the game? Well, there are lots of opportunities, and I've been sharing them in many of my videos. Specifically, if you go check out uh, one of my Quick Tips episodes, I believe it's Quick Tips number three, that's the Exploits Edition, and in it I share a lot of hidden tips with you. While some tips have been around in the game for a very long time, like being able to send your tools to the Green Kingdom through Bearmond for free, free, others are introduced with new features. You may have heard that when Good Game Studios introduced the global uh, inventory for decorations, some players were able to double their decorations overnight. I forget exactly what the steps were, but I think if you took one or two specific kinds of decorations out of your outposts and put them into your ice castle, and then you waited 12 hours overnight, they would be doubled. I heard about this on the very last day before it was taken out of the game, so unfortunately I didn't get to double any of mine, but many players did. Good Game Studios said on the forums that it would remove any doubled decorations, but I've heard from many players who took advantage of this exploit that that was not the case. 
You could have also sold these decorations for coins. Remember, decorations can be sold sometimes for 60 or 100,000 coins nowadays, so many players made millions of coins doing this. Many of you have probably heard of the practice of farming, which took advantage of an exploit surrounding the extra resources looted attribute for commanders. Essentially, this attribute enabled players to loot resources that weren't actually at the target, and of course, if the commander had extra looting, that didn't mean that the defender would lose extra resources. So, uh, essentially, you would send resources to a friendly target, you would attack that target with a resource looting commander to loot more resources than you sent, and there you go, you've multiplied your resources. Good Game Studios did take this out, but only after it had been around for a few years, and many players had used it to upgrade their Hall of Legends all the way to level 550. Anyone just starting to upgrade their Hall of Legends now, without access to farming, has kind of been screwed over, but luckily Good Game Studios has reduced the resource requirements for upgrading the Hall of Legends, and nowadays you will probably need more skips than you will resources. Another thing that used to be possible in the game was the transferring of attack tools and even defense tools from high-level players to low-level accounts. The way this was done is the high-level player would store these tools in a resource village or monument or lab or some other uh, target like that that could be captured. Then the low-level account would capture it from the high-level player and they've got the tools. Good Game Studios made it so that tools now return to the player who previously owned the capturable target, so unfortunately this one doesn't work anymore as well. For more things that do work currently in the game, once again, you should check out my Quick Tips number 3 episode. I'm almost certain that Good Game Studios knows about all of them, but they've decided to leave them in the game for now, so take advantage of them while you can. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you consider to be cheating, and I look forward to reading your responses. I've been Brior, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.